Donald Trump has been indicted again, this time on federal charges, a total of 37 federal charges related to government documents he took from the White House and kept after the end of his presidency, which he wasn't allowed to do. According to the indictment, I'll undersell it here and describe it as extraordinarily damning, Trump left the White House with, quote, scores of boxes containing classified documents, documents which held information about the defensive capabilities of the United States and other countries, potential military vulnerabilities of the United States and other countries, plans for retaliation against attacks from other countries, and the nuclear programs of the United States. He kept these documents at Mar-a-Lago, his home slash resort in Florida. By the way, can we maybe pass a constitutional amendment that says if you live at a resort, you don't get to be the president? From now on, you can't own and live at a resort if you want to be the president. Can we all get together on that? Probably not. Anyway, Trump kept the documents he took at Mar-a-Lago, a resort which, according to the indictment, annually hosted tens of thousands of members and guests. Trump stored the boxes of documents in various locations around Mar-a-Lago, including, as we've all seen by now, a ballroom where they were stacked up on a stage and a bathroom. Trump is charged with 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information, which means he had information related to the national defense that he, no longer being the president, was not allowed to have, and that he willfully failed to hand those documents over to the proper authorities when asked repeatedly to do so. He's also charged with one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice for having his employees, particularly his aide, Walt Nauda, who is also charged in the indictment, move the documents around in order to hide them from the National Archives, the FBI, and even his own lawyers who were advising him to turn over everything he had. The indictment also alleges under that count that Trump and Nauda lied to the FBI, which, I don't know if you know this, you're really not supposed to do. The remaining counts in the indictment all relate to Trump's attempts to retain or conceal the documents, and Trump lying to the FBI about having the documents, and lying to his lawyers, which then caused them to make false statements to the FBI about the documents. Long story short, He's in a lot of trouble. Now, I've made a video about Trump and these documents already, but at the risk of repeating myself, there are a few basic facts I want to go over to cut through the relentless torrent of bullshit Trump and his cheerleaders have been spraying in an attempt to defend against the charges made in this indictment, so that we're all on the same page here as far as why Trump is in the kind of trouble he is very definitely in. First, all the talk about whether or not Trump declassified the documents before he took them is irrelevant. He claims he declassified them before he took them. He didn't. The president does have broad declassification power, but he can't, as Trump has said, just declassify with a thought. There's a process that has to be completed before a document can be considered declassified, and Trump has never shown any evidence that this process was even started much less finished before he took those documents from the White House. Plus, part of the declassification process is having the documents relabeled as unclassified. And the law says that classified documents must be handled according to their labeled classification. In other words, even if Trump had said, declassify all the documents in those boxes, he took them before they could be relabeled as declassified, which means for all intents and purposes, they were still classified and had to be treated as such. But, like I said, none of that actually matters. Trump had the documents. Trump admits he took the documents. Trump admits he knew what he was taking when he took them. He said this publicly, and he says it in conversations cited as evidence in the indictment. Trump was not allowed to have the documents. He had no right to take them and keep them under any circumstances, whether they were classified at any level or totally unclassified, as many of them were, by the way. When you take something that doesn't belong to you, 
that you're not allowed to have, the technical legal term for that is fucking stealing. They were not his documents. They were presidential records. They belong to the federal government and by extension to the American people. They were supposed to be turned over to the National Archives. Trump didn't do that. He kept them. He refused to give them back when the National Archives noticed they were missing and asked for them. He lied about having them. He tried to hide them from the archives, from the FBI, from his own attorneys. And so far, his main defense has been A, he was allowed to take them, which he wasn't. B, Joe Biden did the same thing, which he didn't. And C, the FBI shouldn't even have been investigating this because Trump is running for president, which makes this election interference, which it isn't. How is that election interference argument even supposed to work in theory? If someone is suspected of doing crimes, but they're a candidate for president that has a viable shot at getting nominated or winning, we're not allowed to investigate them or try to hold them accountable? Prosecuting criminals for the crimes they did is election interference if they're running for office at the time? When did we decide that? Of course, the thing is, we didn't decide that. Trump decided that, and a bunch of Republican politicians and pundits are going along with it because that's what they've done ever since Trump won the nomination in 2016. There's that old saying, Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line. And if there's a clearer example of that than the political career of Donald Trump, I haven't seen it. At this point, the more interesting question for me is, why? Why do Republicans fall in line? Is it because Republican politicians are inherently corrupt, amoral, and power-hungry, and Republican voters are ignorant, easily cowed serfs who enjoy the feel of a boot on their necks? Yeah, probably. But in the case of Trump, I think it's a little bit different. Politicians being full of shit is a trope that is as old as our political system itself. But Donald Trump is the most flagrantly carelessly, recklessly, undeniably full of shit politician in the history of the United States and perhaps the world. It's impossible to overstate how cartoonish and crude and insultingly obvious Donald Trump's dishonesty and corruption and incompetence are. After his arraignment, Trump gave a speech where, among other things, he said this. I did everything right and they indicted me. God damn it. He's the leading Republican candidate for president. Anyway, there's nobody outside Trump's bubble who seriously believes that. In that speech, Trump is saying that after complaining that the Justice Department never indicted Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, despite their many imaginary crimes. But poor Trump, he did everything right and they indicted him. Nobody outside of his cult believes that. He did everything right? I wouldn't believe Trump if he said he'd done anything right. Donald Trump claiming to have done anything right in his entire life might be the most egregious example of the Dunning-Kruger effect possible. He did everything right? Tell me one thing he's ever done right. I'll wait. I'm kidding, I don't give a shit. Fuck him and fuck people who make excuses for him. My point is, the fact that Trump says things like that and still has people cheering him on, and still has people going on TV to carry water for him, shows, again, in case we forgot, that the Republicans are a party of suckers and cowards. There's a real easy way to tell which ones are which, too. It's all about where they're sitting. The ones sitting on television defending Trump and denying his crimes and selling his snake oil, they're the cowards. The ones sitting in the crowd applauding, planning on voting for him, they're the suckers. The suckers are suckers because they're too poorly informed, too captive to their own prejudices, and just too fucking fat-headed to know any better. They get their information from Fox News or Newsmax or The Daily Wire or Infowars or some other right-wing shit rag, and they like Trump because they buy into his tough guy, rich guy act because he absolves them of their bigotry, and because he bullies and threatens people they don't like. Immigrants, LGBTQ people, people of color, poor people, not them. 
other poor people. The cowards are cowards because they know Trump is full of shit. They know Trump is a crook. They know Trump is only just barely qualified to be a pretend CEO on a reality show, never mind President of the United States. They know all of this, but they fall in line anyway because they're too chicken shit to stand up to Trump and to his loud, angry army of suckers. And let me make this perfectly fucking clear. I wouldn't expect them to stand up to Trump on ideological grounds. All that bile Trump spews, the racism, the transphobia, the homophobia, the xenophobia, the swaggering, empty patriotism. The coward Republicans believe all of that too. It's what their party stands for. They're not cowards for not standing up to Trump over that stuff. They're bigoted pieces of shit, but they're not cowards. They're cowards because they would rather let Trump utterly destroy their party then disown him and provoke the wrath of the reactionary fanatics in his base, the aforementioned suckers. Has a major political party ever been as terrified of its own base as the Republicans are right now? That's definitely not the case with the Democrats. They often seem like they're terrified of winning elections, but not of their own voters. But Republican politicians? Scared shitless of pissing off Donald Trump's base, which is also the party's base. And I have not an ounce of sympathy for them because whose fault is that? The Republican Party has been a den of bigots and fascists for longer than I've been alive, but for the longest time, it got along just fine by keeping the most repugnant views of its most extremist members down to a low hum. Republican politicians would speak in code, they'd employ dog whistles, they'd wink at the fascists and the xenophobes and the homophobes and the religious zealots to let them know they were all on the same side, but they didn't let the extremists take over. Then, along came Trump, riding that tidal wave of reactionary white resentment that followed eight years of a popular and successful black man being president, and that party establishment that had kept the Nazis and the conspiracy theorists on board but in check all these years just kind of stepped aside and let them take over. And even though Trump just barely won in 2016 while losing the popular vote and lost emphatically in 2020, and even though that Trump-loving base is nowhere near as numerous as its loudness and the amount of attention that gets paid to it suggest, most of the supposedly moderate and mainstream Republican pundits and politicians seem content to let the kooks and crackpots continue running the show. Here's the thing, though. Trump's days as a serious presidential candidate are numbered and may, in fact, be over already. He's been indicted twice, this federal indictment stemming from his theft of government documents, and, don't forget, the New York State indictment in the Stormy Daniels hush money case, and there are almost certainly more to come. He's still under federal investigation for his role in the January 6, 2021 Capitol insurrection and the attempt to block the certification of the 2020 election result, and he's under investigation in the state of Georgia for election interference there following the 2020 election. Trump's chickens are finally coming home to roost. He's having trouble finding lawyers to represent him because the severity of his crimes, the probability of his guilt, and the totality of how fucked he is are apparent to anyone who can see straight. Trump's political arguments and claims that others have done what he is accused of doing are irrelevant and will amount to nothing in court, but that sort of meaningless popular appeal is all the response he seems willing or able to make. Which doesn't surprise me. What else is he going to say? He's already admitted in public to doing most of the stuff he's accused of doing in the federal indictment. He says he was allowed to do it, but he's wrong about that. I have not seen a single legal expert or lawyer who isn't working for Trump argue that he was within his rights to take those documents, much less attempt to conceal them from the National Archives or the FBI. Trump did that shit. He's going down for it. And because its voters are too gullible and its leaders are too scared to cut him loose, he's going to pull the Republican Party down with him. Or at least, I hope, 
that's what happens because they all have it coming and it can't happen soon enough to suit me.